It's true that the number one healthcare issue in the media today are drug prices, which most definitely affects our treatment and the prices we are charged for many of our prescription drugs. See a recent article about drug pricing and the insurers in the Wall Street Journal. But this is not the topic we'll be discussing today. We'll be talking about the challenges of the healthcare marketplace, coding groupers and EMRs, a subject not generally known to the consumer masses. What are medical coding groupers? And what is their role in medical coding? Why are groupers essential for coding? According to the NIH, medical coding groupers are complex software analytic tools used to systematically group healthcare services that patients receive. Like the original International Classification of Diseases is used to track and describe diseases, grouping healthcare services sounds very benign. That is until, just like the ICD system, now brings in the monetary component. Grouping is based on medical records claims or claim data sets required and used by healthcare system providers and submitted to U.S. health insurance companies for monetary reimbursement. Yes, this is how healthcare providers get paid for diagnostic and procedural services performed. CMS, or Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, developed its own grouper, the MSDRG grouper for hospital-based systems, which determine hospital-based bundled payments. These can be state contracted for Medicaid. So, from a financial perspective, groupers are equally as important as coding in determining provider payments. While this is the common theme to understand the grouper role, we would suggest thinking of grouping as step two in the process of payment reimbursement. Step one coding, step two grouping. Step one coding is absolutely essential for grouping, and grouping is essential for reimbursement. For proper context, there are both outpatient groupers and inpatient groupers used. There are focused specialty groupers, there are MSDRG groupers, APC groupers, there are non-governmental groupers such as the APRDRG groupers and EAPG groupers, and these in particular are proprietary products produced by name recognizable companies and agreed to or contracted for providers to submit to insurers who agree to accept these products. Other name recognizable companies and their associated divisions also provide proprietary groupers, with these groupers more focused and aimed at particular events or procedures examples being pregnancy and radical hysterectomy. Regardless, we would strongly argue that the extensive use of non-governmental proprietary groupers is anti-competitive and ultimately drives up healthcare costs inappropriately. When there's a single source of any service, that single source is empowered to charge as they see fit. Which reminds me of the quote in Independence Day, where Judd Hirsch is talking to the president about funding for Area 51 and the study of extraterrestrials. The conversation went as follows. I don't understand. Where does all this come from? How do you get funding for something like this? You don't actually think they spend $20,000 on a hammer, $30,000 on a toilet seat, do you? Mr. President, this is... The point is, non-governmental providers can charge anything they want, and with no checks, are free to load the system with inflated pricing. These companies can license and contract their groupers to whomever they want, since there is no oversight for privately held solutions. They provide notoriously bad customer service, and there are numerous complaints, mostly from healthcare facilities and partner vendors. When you're a single source of a commodity, you don't answer to anyone. Are insurance companies in bed with these private grouper providers? Do states requiring proprietary groupers for Medicaid reimbursement realize that they are feeding the anti-competitive market which further dries up costs? Do states realize the additional expense, time, and red tape that healthcare facilities must endure to get a bill out the door for reimbursement to cover healthcare expenses? What happened to the general bidding system in the marketplace? These are all profound questions that all of us, whether we're in healthcare or as consumers, should be asking. And since we're already talking about costs, let's take a swipe at the biggest abusers of the administrative expense that drives up healthcare costs that no one talks about the electronic medical record, or the EMR. What we've seen over the last 15 years is a decreasing amount of EMR vendor choices for healthcare systems, with basically two pillar companies in the marketplace. All healthcare systems use an EMR, even through clinics and private practices. This market is big business, and unfortunately the healthcare system in general faces the burden of this expense. That said, it is shocking and astonishing just how much EMR vendors charge healthcare systems for their software packages and the adjoining support. As an example, an eight hospital system can spend well over a billion dollars for a glorified order entry and billing system. 
That's right, a glorified order entry and billing system. True, these systems are designed for healthcare, but still at its core, it's an order entry and billing system. For some reason, the line of thinking in healthcare is that having the right EMR becomes the most important priority and budget expense for hospital systems. But why? The changing of EMR systems rather than the less expensive upgrading of existing systems happens way too frequently and is mostly promoted by false narratives such as a need for interoperability. While this message has been ongoing for many years, with the definition of interoperability meaning the exchange of healthcare data across networks, EMR vendors promote it as exchange with other healthcare systems within the EMR vendors community of implementations. Who helps to promote continually switching EMRs? Our answer may surprise you and will be a further topic to discuss in future videos. The EMR power play is a deep subject that many viewers and certainly the public are not aware of. One more thing, even the government drives this narrative. See the attached article here. Why bring this up? Why do costs to healthcare providers matter to all of us? Obviously these costs get passed along to the consumer, but beyond that, healthcare providers at all levels are being forced to merge into conglomerates to offset a few main factors, but the one we're focused on here are the burdening administrative expenses incurred by healthcare facilities. But this argument encroaches on our healthcare decision-making choices and quality of care. And while it makes the big healthcare systems more powerful to negotiate prices on the one hand, or at least that's the assumption, it does enable an environment for diluted personal care. Again, more on this in the future. Back to coding groupers. For smaller companies in the revenue cycle world, the larger companies view these revenue cycle management centric companies as competition and do their utmost to exclude participation in any licensing of these grouper products. See the following reference for grouper information. Grouping, in fact, is such a big deal in healthcare that as stated before, CMS and state Medicaids require grouping for its agency reimbursements. Additionally, many state contracts name and require particular groupers to be used when healthcare facilities submit their claims. These can be older legacy groupers that are essentially out of date because of contract terms and conditions do not get changed. Only the most creative, nimble companies hope to find a niche in today's marketplace. Here's one example of how we're doing just that. One of our solutions addresses the problem of legacy groupers. We provide to the marketplace a high performance, scalable solution, noting the word customized, accurate output with result responses downstream that supplant any existing process solutions and mitigate the pitfalls of manual labor or legacy based solutions. We tailor a solution to meet the volume and security output requirements as necessary. What are we addressing? We are trying to address current medical records coding and current MSDRG grouping and matching this up with state contracted legacy coding and grouping. State contracts may have written into the terms and conditions use of a grouper from 2015 for reimbursement processing. So this presents a challenge. Code current diagnoses and procedures and provide an equivalency for how the same record would have been coded years prior. Here's a great example. In 2015, how would we have coded the diagnosis of COVID-19? Codes from 2023 for COVID-19, such as U07.1, became effective in 2022. Never mind that, COVID-19 did not exist prior to 2019, so how would you group an older version of the MSDRG grouper prior to version 40, say for example version 33? What we provide is a mapping of the current MSDRG grouper, say grouper 40 results, alongside for comparison legacy contracted MSDRG groupers, say grouper 33. So the output results that we provide is an associated equivalency coding results of medical records that address contracted state requirements for grouping and do this in a high speed, accurate, automated fashion. We then make this cost beneficial to the market. We provide a custom layout of readable electronic results with the current year's coding aligned next to legacy mapped codes for a given contract year, as shown in the example below. This example from the solution is driven by CMS updates to the MSDRG grouper, and is subject to date sensitivity and implemented accordingly. Additionally for this software, we will provide a user interface to call up for audit and review of all medical records or account numbers, which can be done by human auditing. Will the market take advantage of this? We'll leave that open for now. 
Regardless, we'd like to emphasize the words customized and tailored. Offerings that are tailored or customized are very rarely, if ever, offered by the large vendors. Why should they? They're comfortable with their business and the leverage they have. It reminds us of the big three automotive manufacturers in the 50s and 60s. And then came along a change in paradigm, the foreign car market. And so history reminds us of how these large business pillars change. But for now, and for these large healthcare enterprises, why have to spend money to support customization? And that becomes impinging. What does this mean? Well, simply, you are relegated to the offering that the large vendors offer with no modifications or changes which may better suit a particular need or use case. Adaptation is just not written into their systems. Large vendors have become stayed in the marketplace for all the reasons stated above. And this means they call the shots with a take it or leave it mentality. This is unfortunate as it stifles innovation and in fact suppresses it. Another ding on both of these topics mentioned in our video. We hope to have additional follow-ups on the topics we are discussing in this video since these subjects have far-reaching implications in the healthcare space. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel.